Hello friends, I am Dr. Ankit Madaria and today I am going to discuss about a difficult L5 S1 disc herniation scenario. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to describe this case as it's, it was a 46 year old male who had complained of left low limb pain uh, since past one month and this pain was so excruciating that he was not able to sit, stand. There was no sensory or motor deficit but there was lots of pain. Uh, looking at the MRI, you could see that there's a L5 S1 left sided disc herniation which is compressing on the uh, actually it's central and left side which is compressing on the left traversing nerve root and the dural sac. Now I had decided to operate this case by transforaminal endoscopy but uh, as you could see the ideal scenario, the ideal cannula position would be this so that uh, we could get to our diseased area but in, as you know it's an L5 S1 case with a large facet joint so even if we try our best the best scenario we could get is our cannula would be entering the disc in this level but there is a problem here that you cannot access all of this tissue which is actually compressing the dural sac and that it would make your work very difficult to see those nerve roots and decompress them and achieve a good result so what would be the ideal scenario is you could place if you could place your cannula in this fashion then all of this area would be easily covered by you and you could easily decompress this uh, compressing uh, dural sac and the traversing S1 nerve root but the problem is there's a large facet joint which is preventing you from reaching this area and uh, the solution would be to remove the part of the extra articular part of this facet joint so that uh, the cannula could be placed in a desirable position which is closer to the nerve roots and being very safe by operating under local anesthesia doing all this procedure under local anesthesia uh, many people who do an outside in technique would place their Tom Shady needle on the facet joints and start reaming but uh, somehow I find this technique to be a little bit risky as this is more of an image guided and uh, I personally like to put my needle into the disc first and then start my procedure rather than putting my needles on the facet joint so my preferred choice of trajectory would be this I would put my needle just kissing the facet joint and into the disc and uh, then I would use a facet trimmers to take this out, take the extra articular process, uh, extra articular part of the facet joint out. Now, uh, if you don't know, the facet trimmers are designed in such a way that the tip is actually uh, blunt and they have cutting edges on the sides. So, uh, it is quite safe to work around the neural structures, and as you are using it with your hands, you are rotating it slowly and doing it under local anesthesia. Uh, if, uh, if there's any, if you, are, if you are close to your neural tissue, patient would usually experience some pain and you should withdraw at that moment. And it becomes very safe when you do it under local anesthesia. So the facet trimmers comes, uh, starts from 4 mm and goes up to 9 millimeters, and that's how we sequentially ream our uh, facets so that we slowly take away little bit by little bit of bone. So I started reaming over the guide, I changed this, I put a needle, change it with a guide wire and over the guide wire I put this facet trimmer 4mm, then change it to 5, then to 6, 7, 8 and finally 9. By doing this 9mm, I am able to remove this part of bone. Now this is the extra articular part and this does not cause any instability whatsoever and uh, by doing this, our cannula position becomes quite ideal now as we could put our cannula and depress it and then uh, we are easily able to access this the dotted part of the disc which is actually compressing on the dural sac so now it is the actual case with what I did I put my needle just touching kissing the facet joints and I put the needle into the disc and change it with a guide wire and over the guide wire I put a dilator to create a track I did not put my dilator into the disc I just uh, stayed on the surface of the disc and uh, then I started reaming the facet joint 4, 5, 6 mm serially 
and then I use a little bit of hammer to put the dilators into the disc so that it creates that annular opening and gradually started dilating that annular opening and also reaming that facet joints with that. So this is sequentially I'm increasing the size of the reamer and finally I'm reaching the 9mm size and all of this is done under local anesthesia and patient did not complain of any, any leg pain whatsoever. Of course he'll have some amount of back pain but that is acceptable when you're doing this procedure. Now what you can see is how superficial my cannula is after doing this facet reaming. Uh, after doing 9mm reaming and then when I put back my cannula over the guide wire you can see I'm just inside the annulus in the lateral view and I'm quite deep I'm quite uh, up to the midline in the AP view and that is a very ideal position and this cannula is tapered so I'm very sure that I'm not damaging any nerve roots or uh, neuro, uh, there's no chance of any dural injury because we are doing it very slowly under local anesthesia and patient does not experience any radicular pain whatsoever in this case. I, I put my cannula over the dilator and you can see it is in a very comfortable position right in the middle where the her herniation is and right just underneath the posterior, annular, uh, posterior vertebral body line and which is very ideal position to do an L5-S1 uh, or any level of disc herniation. You can see that our probe is growing across the midline to the opposite side so we are very sure that we would be able to access all the all those tissues that are compressing our central and left paracentral region. So this is the endoscopic view right after we enter the disc and you can see that we have landed just uh, underneath the dural sac and this is the part of dural sac that we actually want to decompress. This is the post of uh, part of PLL and the posterior annulus that you can see and we are working just underneath that part and decompressing those uh, the part of the posterior annulus and the herniated disc that is we use our grasper to create a plane and uh, we remove the part of the disc and the annulus that is compressing our nerve uh, traversing the root here or the dural sac here it takes uh, a patience and very calm and stable hands to not uh, damage these structures but this is a very safe procedure once uh, you know what you are doing. After adequate decompression we could cauterize all those bleeders in this area and uh, we could withdraw our cannula now to see that this is the parts of posterior annulus and this is our actually traversing the root and we are so close to it we have decompressed actually we have decompressed so well here. Now you can see that uh, after coagulation and we are putting our probe here and it is reaching beyond the midline. So we have actually decompressed beyond the midline on both the sides of the nerve root and you can see that it is very free here. There is some part of redundant annulus lying here that I usually remove. I don't leave those and I like to see a completely well decompressed picture of uh, uh, our nerve neural tissues and after withdrawing we we'll see how well we have decompressed this L5-S1 level and everything is quite free the dural sac the traversing root everything is moving quite well and uh, this uh, this is an excellent demonstration of the demonstrate uh, decompression that we could get by doing uh, by reaming the facet joints and you could actually see that how little of the disc we have removed there's not much uh, done and this gives a very good outcome for the patient and immediate recovery to whatever pain and uh, paresthesia that he has. You could see that from the top to the bottom of the disc level it is very well decompressed now. And such a small part of disc has been removed. Immediately after the surgery as we turn the patient onto the stretcher you could see that you could see कोई तकलीफ एकदम बढ़िया अभी खड़े हो पा रहे थे कि ऐसा ऑपरेशन के बाद कुछ नहीं बैठ भी नहीं पाते थे कुछ नहीं कर पाते थे रख लीजिए रख लीजिए आराम से पैर पर रख लीजिए एकदम मर गए थे मर गए थे ठीक अभी कोई तकलीफ नहीं कोई तकलीफ नहीं ठीक थैंक यू so what I asked him was uh, to ask, ask him to raise one of his leg but he is so comfortable just immediately after the surgery that he is comfortably raising both of his legs and uh, when I asked him were you able to sit or stand he was saying I was dying in his pain uh, so 
this is the beauty of doing uh, the surgery under local anesthesia that, that you could see the immediate results and it is very satisfying to do all these surgeries. Uh, so I am Dr. Ankit Maharia. Uh, thank you for your time. I will see you in my next video. Bye.